Welcome to the Drop the Mic Wrestling Podcast on Tobacco Road Sports Radio and TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com as part of your Wrestling Wednesday card. I'm your host, Michael Davis. The draft is this Friday and Monday. Can WWE hit this reset for the Triple H era? What does WWE need to do in this draft? And before Shan Smith returns for a WWE mock draft live on the show, the Stash House Podcast host Tyler Sr. joins me for the first time right now on Drop the Mic. Tyler, how are you doing, man? up man thanks for the invite of course and you can see he's sporting a uh seth rollins t-shirt can you give us your best seth rollins entrance uh oh, 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 oh. <laughs> dude i i saw that shirt when you logged on and we've been chatting up backstage for everybody uh listening on our youtube channel and I was like, whoa, that's a cool shirt. Started talking about Raw After Mania, but Raw After Mania was pretty disappointing. You know, we rehashed that backstage. We No need to bring it up again on the show, but I feel like this draft can be a real reset in terms of Triple H having control of creative as far as we know. I mean, there's a couple things that, you know, Seth Rollins versus Omos at Backlash is probably one of the things where I'm scratching my head on where that came from, but... Tyler, this what do you think the draft needs to do in order for this to be a reset for the Triple H era? Make an impact. What does that what does that mean? Not to bring in Roman in the bloodline, but we need more than just the blood storyline. You know what I mean? When we hear draft, it's like when I think of the draft, I think of okay, they need to get everybody back in place. They need to get some structure company because we've seen for the past year or so now you have the bloodline on both shows you'll have the judgment day on both shows Sami Zayn, kevin owens you have certain superstars on both shows so the draft it needs structure and it needs to make an impact how would they make an impact i'm not sure that's the problem that is the problem and you mentioned like guys going on both shows like the bloodline judgment day of course like those are your big story guys but I mean, there there was a point in time, you know, back 0506, you didn't see this crossover. Raw was Raw, SmackDown was SmackDown. And we had Raw pay-per-views and we had SmackDown pay-per-views. So, and yeah. it worked out. Like, oh my gosh, because I started getting into this about 2004, 2005. And that was like right when Cena and Batista won the world titles at WrestleMania 21. Like, and it, it it had two distinct feels, and um, now we just have one set of tag team champions. We have one world champion. Do you think they need to reintroduce or split the titles via this draft? Yes. Uh, well, I don't know about via the draft because that will make it tricky. I think they put themselves in a hole with the bloodline situation. Yes, Roman was dominant. You put both titles on them, but on him, but – that kind of hinders the rest of the roster because if you put two titles on one guy, whoever beats him has, has to have like a lot of heat going into that match. And same with the bloodline, the tag team. And that really messed up the roster because now you're just throwing together Braun Strowman and Ricochet together and tell them to figure it out. So however they feel they need to split the titles, I think the draft might lead to it, but I don't think you need to say, well, Sammy, Kevin, we know you just had this magical moment at WrestleMania, but we got to take one of the belts off of you. I don't think that's the right way to go. And that's really what I've been trying to figure out for the past year or so. How are they going to split Roman titles? And now how are they going to split the tag team titles? And and here's, I, I haven't even thought in terms of way of like splitting the tag titles that would make sense without taking away from that moment. Because that tag team main event was probably, if it wasn't the best match of the weekend, it was like really, really close. You can't take that moment away from definitely, you. Definitely one of the most uh, emotional moments, that whole storyline coming together with Sammy and Kevin from their friends for over a decade now to that moment. You can't just wipe that away and say, okay, you know, party's over, parade over with. You can't do that. Yeah. May, and here's an idea with the world tiles. Let the WWE Universal Championship just form into one title, and 
That way you can keep Roman's reign going. And then there's apparently a title that's waiting to be introduced. We've heard reports and rumors of that for the last two, three months. I'm hoping, hoping it's the big gold world heavyweight title. Right. So with that, I was thinking, you know, of course, going to WrestleMania, I think it'll be a new design to the belt. So it's a totally new belt or are they just making it the new world titles? What are they exactly doing? Is it a new design or like a new belt, like weight class or something like that? Or I, I've, heard, I've heard a little both. I've, I've heard designs because um, the tag titles, like they're they're due for a tag, like yeah. a redesign. <laughs> Um, I'm not a fan of the WWE and Universal title. They look just like bland in terms yeah. of like just the big WWE logo in the front and black strap, blue strap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if they were to introduce the World Heavyweight title, this is a title that Triple H made infamous. Right, right, Ric Flair, Ric Flair, Batista, or all the Evolution guys. Mm-hmm. But going back to the even like you said, you got into it 2004, 2005. Around 2003, they had the undisputed title where, yes, you have Raw SmackDown, but the undisputed title, that champion can go to both Raw and SmackDown. And sometimes you may have a triple threat for like, you have Undertaker who on SmackDown versus Brock Lesnar who on SmackDown. Then Triple H or somebody from Raw will get involved with it. So you can have that as well, but. Nowadays, it's different than 2003 because Roman, I mean, almost a thousand days, that plays a role as well. So, yeah, it's you're, you're not taking the tile off Roman this close to a thousand days. I'm assuming it's going to happen at SummerSlam, would be the next opportunity for it to happen, or maybe yeah. even wait until next year at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's they got a lot of work on their hands with that one, that's for sure, and part time in it. So, that's another. <laughs> hey i mean if, if you're the best in the business whatever and and that's the thing like if you're sp- going ahead with the draft make a new world title for i mean because there's a lot of talent you know we could mention cody seth rollins lashley priest gunther i think gunther's ready for that world title run um there, there's just so much talent you can't i mean this this draft is a perfect time to introduce a second world title i believe Yeah, like you said, a change, some structure, and like AAA said, they do plan on changing the game, so that could mean anything, honestly. And, you know, going back to the 2004, 2005, 2003 era, the Ruthless Aggression era, one thing I really loved that made Raw and SmackDown different was the general managers. Right. I know know a lot of people say it's overdone or uh, we've seen this before, but – you had a boss for Raw, you had a boss for SmackDown. They would draft their superstars and they would be in control of their own show, trying to make it the better WWE brand. Do you think they could go back to the general managers this year? The only reason I'm going to say I'm not sure is because we have so much information nowadays. Like for the past however many years, I thought Bischoff was really the general manager. And then I listened to his podcast, and he like, no, nah, that was just my own air character. Like, I was still getting things sent from Vince and Bruce Pritchard and all those guys behind the scenes. So I think that's the only reason. Like, yes, you're the general manager, but we know what's really going on. And I think it'll play a role in the show. Like, have this guy over the show, make matches, do promos. Instead of one match happen, we got a commercial break, we get a package. Then another match happened. It could bring some type of structure to it, but in terms of as a fan, we know you're not really calling the shots. That's uh, I never thought about it that way. I've always thought like the on-air character, you know, it makes it interesting, but I, I never thought about what if... Like they're ooh. good. They have to make like how um, Adam Pierce can be sometimes. Like he can be a face and he can be a heel. But if they're going to do it, it has to be at the level of Teddy Long and Eric Bischoff era. In my and that's tough because that. they were like, they were perfect for those roles. And now I don't know who can they even, can they bring somebody from, you know, the higher ups or somebody that's in the company that we don't know about. If they do it like, like that, somebody we never heard of, I wouldn't mind that. But it can't be somebody who we've 
seen week after week after week already. Now, I've had a couple ideas. One of them, if they brought in general manager, is William Regal. Regal just came back to the company, leaving AEW. His son's in NXT. Maybe he drafts his son in a year or two. There's a story there. Or as big as the Up Up Down Down brand is, as big as that YouTube channel is, Tyler Breeze and Xavier Woods are actually playable general manager characters on the new video game. Why not, as Biggie's mm. injured, Kofi's injured, why not have Xavier Woods and Tyler Breeze at least on for the next five, six months as general managers of those brands? I think with Xavier, it, it'll be hard to – I'm guessing he'll be a face. Like, you know, get the, put the heels in situations. But it'll seem too much like the the era where they had the laptop and it was like, oh, uh, we got a – I think it'll be a lot like that. Tyler Breeze, I'm not too familiar with, so I really can't speak on that. Um, who else did you say? You said somebody else. I said William Regal. But be, uh... contract wise, is he, is he able to come back on screen at the moment? On, on camera? Because that, that would be a question. Because that was like a handshake agreement with Tony Khan, right? Yeah, something like that. And you, he had to wait a while till he could show up. Cause he's been back with the company for a while now, but he can't be on camera at the moment. So that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just it's frustrating because like last draft a few times, it's kind of been lackluster. I don't know if that's because Stephanie McMahon would come out and announce all the picks, Raw SmackDown, everything. There'd be there'd be no banter between Raw or SmackDown. How am I as a fan supposed to get invested in Raw versus SmackDown if there's no rivalry or feud or heat there. Yeah, I think the last time I felt like it was a real brand separation was when they had brought NST involved with like Survivor Series and all that. I think that was like the last time it made sense. But now when you got so many guys going, uh, men and women, I'm sorry, going from uh, Raw Monday to SmackDown Friday, it's going to be kind of tough to put them with just one brand after we've seen them throughout the past year or so on both. So I think it's a great time though, for them to be like, okay, let's stop everything, let's get some order and let's get the ball rolling. Like we need to. Yeah. And you met, and you brought up NXT. NXT is apparently eligible. Triple H says it's changing the game. Everyone's eligible. Commentators, ring announcers, everybody. And is there anyone from NXT? I mean, I think the obvious would be Braun Breaker is probably getting a call up. Who who else do you see from NXT potentially getting the move up to the main roster? Uh, like I said, Braun Breaker, who I wrote down. Well, he just won the belt. Mello. That's his name, Mello. Carmelo Hayes. People, you know, they've been teasing the Hurt Business somehow, some way, coming back together, but... We'll see how that goes. But he's the champion at the moment. So I don't think he made not right now because he's the champion. Announcers, I would love to see Booger T on Raw SmackDown. That's just my personal preference because he is funny. And um to be honest, I'm not oh NST nowadays like I was three years ago, three, four years ago. So who's like a hot commodity they have right now? Well, we haven't seen him on screen in two, three, four months. But this guy right here, for our YouTube viewers, Cameron okay. Grimes, okay. formerly known as Trevor Lee. I'm a little biased, but I feel like he's done everything he could do in NXT. Uh, and we haven't seen him in a few months. Apparently, he's redesigning and reforming like his image in terms of like how his body looks. Okay, That could be an option. I I think Carmelo Hayes is interesting, especially with the NXT Championship. Maybe do something where, like, Kevin Owens debuted on the main roster and went after John Cena in the U.S. title. Mm, I'm not mad at that. They need they need a shocker. They need a shocking moment with this draft. You got – it's two drafts, right? They're doing one Friday and one Monday, right? Yeah. And they're doing it right in the NFL draft window. Yeah. So they need a – they need something to be like, whoa, because obviously Jay White is in AEW. Um, 
the other guy, I forgot his name, Cage, I believe his name was. Yeah, Brian Big, Cage. He's back with AEW. So those two shocking things are uh, shocking moments are not there. So they got to do something to make everybody be like, whoa, didn't see that one coming. Do you think, because I heard rumors and I've even heard his name like kind of dropped on Monday Night Raw when Cody Rhodes was doing a promo saying my good friend Matt, and that obviously referring to Matt Cardona, formerly uh, known as Zack Ryder. Do you think he could end up being drafted to Raw or SmackDown? Nah. nah. I don't see that. I don't see that. I don't see that. If he does, cool. But, I mean, he dates Chelsea Green or he married to Chelsea Green? Yeah, he's married to Chelsea Green. He's like the Karen now yeah, in WWE. So it's a- it's a possibility, but I mean, who knows? He was at Mania. I think he took a picture. He was at Mania and everything. It's not off the table, but I don't think that'll be the "Oh my God, he's here! I can't believe it" type of moment. Maybe for some people, but for me, that's still just that rider. You know, I, I wasn't a big Zach Ryder guy either. <laughs> Once he wasn't a uh, Edge head anymore with Edge and Kurt Hawkins, yeah. I'm like, uh, whatever. But if I know Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona, wherever he's going by, apparently Zack Ryder's dead. If Matt Cardona sees me. I did not say that. Dude is definitely Jack <laughs> a lot more than he was in WWE. But uh, Tyler, we've been talking about the WWE draft. It's got to have a shocker. It's got to have a big moment. It's got to have a big surprise, especially combating against the NFL draft Friday night. Uh, Drafts are going to happen SmackDown Friday at 8 on Fox and then following up Monday. And we're about to get into a mock draft. But before we invite Shannon on to do a little Raw and SmackDown, where can they find you? You're the host of the Stash House podcast. Yes, sir. Uh, all podcast streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor app, YouTube, subscribe, Stash House Podcast, on all social media platforms as well, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, Stash House, everywhere, podcast. You'll find yeah. it everywhere. Find it everywhere. I found this guy on Facebook Reels and you know, was scrolling. I'm like, hey, we got to get him on the show. I'm so glad you got to hop on. We got to do it again. But yes. we're going to get Shannon Smith right here on the show doing the draft. And obviously, against me, I'm going to be the better GM. We're going WWE 2K my GM mode this thing. Uh, Tyler, it was great having you. Thanks, man. Thanks for the invite. Welcome back to the Drop the Mic Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Davis. I had to go do a little wardrobe change and had to welcome in my guest right here. You saw him last week. Mr. Shan Smith. Shan, how are you doing in that ugly 49ers hoodie? <laughs> I'm doing very, very well. Ready to talk some wrestling. Ready to do this live mock draft that hardly anybody has done ever before. Yeah, so we had this idea on the whim on last week's episode. If you didn't get to watch it, you can go back on Tobacco Road Sports Raves YouTube channel and watch it. But we are doing an official Drop the Mic WWE mock draft. We are going to be representing our brands. I'm wearing blue. That's why I had to go through the wardrobe change. Got my Duke hat on. Got a Coach K ring shirt on. And then Shan changed into that uh, 49ers hoodie. So we're kind of even just hating each other's teams. But we love wrestling, and we got a bond over that. And for this draft, there's not a lot of rules because this could change the game, as Triple H has said. Any Raw, SmackDown, or NXT employee is available, is eligible to be drafted. And Shay and I were talking backstage. Tag teams can be drafted together, but factions greater than three cannot. So if somebody wants the New Day or somebody wants to take like Finn, Damian, Dom of the Judgment Day, they can. But we're not going to allow a huge like Legato Del Fantasma with all those guys, Zelina, Rey Mysterio. We're not going to allow that. But... Shannon, you got the coin toss. You got the first overall pick in the draft. Who are you selecting number one overall? I don't know if I should Roger Goodell it or not, but I might just do that. With the first pick, 2003, WWE mock draft. Monday Night Raw selects Roman Reigns. No. 
You can't do that. This no. is what you have to understand. The WWE Championship is defended on Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw usually has the World Championship on its show. Got to go with the best available. You know, I'm doing like you like teams have passed. Pick the best available. Roman Reigns right now is killing the game. Put him on Monday Night Raw. You're a jerk. You knew I wanted <laughs> Roman. Dang it. That is such a good story right now. Um, well, if you're going to take Roman, if you're going to take the greatest modern day wrestling champion of all time, then I guess I'm going to have to go get somebody who is going to be on TV every week. I'm going to get a guy who will probably take the title off Roman. I'm going to go take Cody Rhodes with the first pick for Friday Night SmackDown. Cody, the American Nightmare, he continues to build his brand and build himself up. It's got to be Cody going number one to SmackDown. Nice. I, I like the pick. Smart move. Very smart move. I, I do a lot of smart moves. Uh, so you're going to have to counter that with this next pick, whoever you got in the line of work. Well, second pick for Monday Night Raw, Seth freaking Rollins. I should have went first, man. <laughs> I knew I'd regret this. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm teasing a S.H.I.E.L.D. get-together Well, on down the road. Nah, you that's, you that's can't draft John Moxley on this That's draft. a joke. That's a, that's a joke. <laughs> the S.H.I.E.L.D. is gone, man. The S.H.I.E.L.D. is over with. Oh, It's a wrap. The S.H.I.E.L.D. is done. I don't think you'll see Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns ever get back together again. <laughs> that would be. Man, that's Aaron. You took, you took, you took my guys right here. Um, let me, there are more, let me do something interesting. Let okay. me kind of attack, be on the defense for Monday Night Raw, because is Roman Reigns enough without his bloodline? I'm going to take the Usos with the SmackDown second overall pick in this draft. It was only a matter of time. It, it was only a matter of time with that. It was only a matter of time. And and I like that idea. I like that. I do. Now, with that being said, the number three pick. And, you know, I've kind of wavered around this number three pick. But I think this number three pick would probably be a little abstract for Monday Night Raw. But I got a funny feeling that this is going to be interesting. With this pick, I'm taking Austin Theory. Okay. He, he, he's he been tabbed as the future of WWE. Is that is that your uh, reasoning for getting him? I'm taking Austin Theory. Reason being is because I can mix Austin Theory in a um, debate with Seth Rollins or a shot at Roman Reigns. I'm going to try to build him up. I've got more guys that I think can help springboard this into fruition. That's going to put the United States title on Monday Night Raw. And that's going to be a springboard title to go to go for Roman Reigns. That is however long that this undisputed championship is going to be, because you already know that one of these championships is going to SmackDown. You can't just have all the world titles on one show. So I think that it's going, there's going to be a title that's going to go over to SmackDown. When? I don't know. But for the time being, I'll have a United States champion. Or I'll have a springboard championship on the marquee show. Okay. Well, if you're going to go take Austin Theory and you're going to take the United States title, I mean, it's only fair. I wrote about him this past week on Sports Carolina Monthly. You can go check out the article. I'm going to take my Aaron Cottonell champion, who will probably be world champion very, very soon. I'm taking Gunther with 
the third overall pick. You know, I was wavering between Gunther as well, too, with Austin Theory. But I think that Gunther would probably fit the SmackDown show a lot better than he would Monday Night Raw. I like Gunther over Austin Theory, but if we're talking about a guy that more than likely will be the heel, because both of these guys are heels right now. Both of these guys are heels. Gunther is a heel. Austin Theory is a heel, but in my opinion, I believe that Austin Theory is a bigger heel than Gunther is. Austin Theory has the um, the heel aspect, the heel attitude, but Gunther has the heel attitude in the ring as far as moves that a heel would use. I think Gunther has that. Austin Theory has the arrogance, the youth, the the flash. That's what makes him a heel. I think Gunther is a natural heel because of, that's his demeanor. Mm-hmm. So you're you're you lost you've lost two big playmakers. You lost Cody. You lost Gunther. I mean, who who you who you taking next for Monday Night Raw? I will go. This this is gonna be a little tough because now we're getting into the gritty parts of it. I think now would probably be a chance to take a woman. I think now will be the time to take a woman. Raw is going to take Rhea Ripley. You're taking the SmackDown Women's Champion? I think right now she's probably the best woman in the game. I well, think right now she's the best. If you're if you're taking Rhea Ripley I'll, away from me and w- away from the SmackDown brand, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to respond by taking the Raw Women's Champion right I'm now mm-hmm. at eighth overall, the fourth pick for SmackDown. I'm taking the Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair. Ah, I figured that was gonna happen. See, we're we're bouncing off each other now. Is what it looks like. We're bouncing off of. I need to make sure I have a women's champion. That's all I need. And I get it. And I understand. And I get it. I mean, for real, I get it. I really do. And and that's the reason why I went for Rhea Ripley. That's the reason why I went for her. You know, uh, Bianca Belair is doing really, really big things. But I think Rhea Ripley would probably be better suited for Raw. Okay. So who are you taking next in the WWE mock draft? This is going to be an interesting pick here. Um, when I thought about this pick going into the actual um, middle parts of the show, I think it could kind of go either way. I think right now you're probably getting fillers as of right now. As much as I want to keep the bloodline going, I'm taking solo. Taking solo. I'm taking solo. The enforcer of the bloodline. I think the Usos are done with the bloodline. They might be. They might not be. There could be a split in there. I think solo has the opportunity to be Um to shake that up. I think Solo might turn on Roman Reigns. I could put it to where Solo turns on Roman Reigns. Could flip the patience there. Yeah. You have options, especially with having Seth Rollins on the show, maybe Austin Theory to break through. You're starting to get options. And I like options. That's why I'm going to take a tag team that may be a tag team for a while, or they may not be. I'm going to take the reigning undisputed WWE tag team champions, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I feel, I, I feel like that would be a, like that would be a good move. Our YouTube viewers can see where we're at right now in this draft. Shannon's got Roman, Seth, Theory, Rhea, Solo, right now, and then. I got Cody, the Usos, Gunther, 
and Bianca Belair and the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions through our first five picks. Shannon, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm liking my draft so far. You're you're going to have to going to have to pick you up with number six. All right, number six. I think it's only right right now that we go ahead and open up the tag team division right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Street Profits on this one. Ooh. Okay, so there's a lot of talk right now about the Street Profits potentially being broken up yep. because of the draft. Yep. And you, you've decided to keep them together. Why? Reason being is because it's t uh, I've got to push a tag team somehow, some way. Um, of course, tag team wrestling is going to be very, very important inside of a brand. And you never know. There's a possibility that these titles could reunify. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility that Raw and SmackDown might put the titles together. There's a possibility that that could happen. Even in the event that these two may split. There is still a lot of promise in both of these athletes. Oh. Now I'm I'm starting to think who I should take with think. my six overall pick. Uh hmm. You know what? If, if, if you're taking the Street Profits, I mean, I really liked Montez Ford potentially coming to SmackDown and being a big-time player. Um, we, we put in the disclaimer that you could pick a team up to three. You know, you can't pick the whole bloodline. You couldn't pick the whole Judgment Day. You've already taken Rhea Ripley away from me. <laughs> Let me go ahead and take Finn Balor, Priest, and Dom the rest of Judgment Day. And they're going... They're going to do their own thing opposite of Rhea Ripley. I like the move. I like it. I really do. But, and I see where you're going with that. And I see where that can be taken. So, yeah. So, here comes the fun part. Here comes the fun part. I know that there's been talk about where this man is going to go. Oh, no, you didn't. But as no, of didn't. right now, this man's going to Monday Night Raw. No, you didn't. My next pick is going to be Drew McIntyre. No, you didn't. No. Oh, my gosh. Put him in the title picture. Oh. And it doesn't matter which title it is. It doesn't matter which title it is. He can take Austin Theory's United States Championship. Or he can go for Roman Reigns' world title. I'm just imagining the matches you could have with Drew and Roman, Drew and Seth, Drew and Theory. Oh my goodness! All about the matchup. You can take, you can take those factions. You can take those factions all you want to. I'm going for the gusto. I want that money. I want that money. Monday Night Raw, y'all gonna pay me. I want that money. I might Man. be able to sway Drew McIntyre to stay. Well, well, you've you've caught on to my, you know, strategy. I'm trying to take the tag teams. I'm trying to load my roster up with factions. Let me go with a faction that's rumored to be broken up. They're not yet, so they're eligible. Let me get some depth in my women's division. Let me get damage control. Ah. Ooh, with Bailey, I like it. Dakota Kai. I like Eosky. it. I like it. I like it. Mmm. Mmm. Woo. That that's that's good. That's good. Oh man. So you're saying okay, so you got damage control. Then you got judgment day. Oh yeah, yeah, you got judgment day. You took you took Finn from me, Bullet Club for life. That hurts me, man. For, for, for life. That hurts me. That hurts me. You took the Bullet Club from me right there, man. You know, I was going to rebrand the Bullet Club. And Monday Night Raw was going to rebrand the Bullet Club. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a joke, man. You know, I don't know what direction Bullet Club is going now with, with Finley as their leader now. That kind of scares me. 
Yeah, some watched, Japan talk right there. I watched a little bit of it, and I'm just kind of like, uh-oh. Then the Bullet Club going over to AEW, man. You know, Switchblade mm-hmm. bringing a faction of the Bullet Club, Human Juice Robinson, and I like that. I like it. But anyway, back to we're back to the WWE now. We're back to the WWE. We're back. We're back. Okay, so all right, so I see you with the tag teams right now. So I'm gonna open up my women's division. And I think that the women's division needs their women's pioneer. And there's so I'm gonna go ahead and go with Charlotte Flair. Oh Char- Charlotte and Rhea have had their battles. Yes. And a lot of fans would love to see that again. Ooh, that puts me in an interesting spot. Let me I'm trying to think. Let me let me go ahead and get somebody from NXT. You know, Raw and SmackDown are, are eligible, but so are NXT superstars. Mm. Let me go ahead. And let me snag Braun Breaker. Ah, that's 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 awesome. I like it. I like I'm, I might it. eventually change his name to Steiner, but for now it's going to be <laughs> Braun Breaker. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk about his father. I, I I know what you're talking about. I know you got to talk about his father. And so <laughs> I like that, man. I mean, for, you know, the legacy, the legacy is running deep. So I mm-hmm. like the, I like the legacy talk. I like what's going on here. Now, with that being said, um, I hate to say this, but this is probably the pick that I really don't like. I really don't want to make this pick, but I feel like it would probably be for the best interest of the company. Monday Night Raw selects Randy Orton. Ooh. If he can come back from his injury, then you already got you got a star right there. Mm-hmm. Especially I don't the, like it. I, I don't like it because of the injury. I don't like it. But you you're know, betting on him to come back and be somebody. Uh, that's a that's a dark horse for me. But you know, with Orton, you're guaranteed a good bit of. You don't know how long you may have him, but when you do have him, it's going to be good. Yeah, really, really good. And maybe even using him in a non-wrestling role until he gets fully healthy. That's but enough. I'm going to put you on blast because thinking about Randy Orton, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his former tag team partner, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle's starting to Ooh. show a more serious side. I've always thought he could feel on SmackDown. He could really be one of the next Kurt Angles if they give him that kind of machine gimmick. Matt Riddle could be a future world champion. I'm, I'm taking Riddle with my uh, ninth pick to SmackDown. I could see him going against Gunther with the Intercontinental Championship. I could see him going with Gunther. Now, mm-hmm. beating Gunther, probably not. But I like the idea. I like the the fresh face. I like the 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 um, promise mm-hmm. that Riddle has. I like the promise. And I think that the promise is there. Good things are there. All right, now you're probably going to call me Vince McMahon with this next pick, but that's cool with me. That's that's really really cool with me. But I want to be go, called Vince. I don't want to be called Vince McMahon, but you're probably going to call me Vince McMahon. I'm not saying I want to be, but you're probably going to call me Vince McMahon with this look right here, with this with this pick right here. But I got to go with Bobby Lashley with the next pick. I don't hate it. I don't hate Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's a solid pick. I, I hate that he has to be put on mute when he talks. But yeah. <laughs> you could uh you could really help out and start filling up the uh bloodline, rather. Um or not the bloodline, the hurt business. Hurt business, yeah. You, yeah. 
And Bobby Lashley versus Roman, Roman Reigns is a matchup we haven't gotten. That's another and we thing. We need to. And that's another thing. I mean, I think that it would be good now. Bobby Lashley has a reputation of being rough in the ring, but so does Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's going to be, I think the reason why that match has been held off so much is because of the mentality of them being rough in the ring. But I think that you need that. If it ain't rough, it ain't right. If it ain't rough, it ain't right. Let me think about, you know, a little little rough action in the ring. And you can't do that without the brawling brutes to SmackDown. But I don't I don't want Butch. I don't want Ridge. Just give me Sheamus. I want the Celtic <laughs> Warrior on SmackDown. He's reliable. I feel like you could put him against Gunther again. You could yep. put him against anyone in Judgment Day. You could turn him heel against Cody. You could do so many things. I mean, Sheamus is a reliable guy in that locker room. I, I agree. I agree. Um, there's a reason why Sheamus is a mainstay in the WWE. There's a reason why he's a mainstay because he is a workhorse. Sheamus is one of those guys who is reliable, like you said, and you're, you know what you're going to get out of Sheamus with that match, uh, with, with any match that Sheamus has, you know what you're going to get out of Sheamus. And I think that that is a great idea. I think that's a great pick. I I like it. If Sheamus would have been around for this pick, I would have took him. But he's not. So who are you taking 11th to Monday night Raw? Let me pad this tag team division a little bit. Let me uh, take Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Ooh. Okay. Okay. You get you get Braun Strowman and Ricochet. I don't oh. know how long that tag team is going to last. But kind of like uh, what I did with Owens and Zayn, you take them as a tag team now, ride it as long as you can, and then you got two solid – Exactly. Guys in the singles division. That's exactly. smart. You, you're exactly. starting to steal my. Uh, <laughs> you're starting to steal my thunder. Uh, <laughs> but once you once you get to this point, you're starting to fill out your mid card. You're starting to fill yep. out your tag division, your women's division. I, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, somebody in our SmackDown women's division. Let me go ahead and snag one Becky Lynch. The man, the man. Splitting her from her hubby. Seth goes to Raw. (laughs) Becky goes to SmackDown. Hopefully they don't have any marital issues after this. But Becky's coming to SmackDown. I I got stuff to run with. Becky, Bailey, Bianca. We're basically taking the whole Raw Women's Division and putting it on Friday nights. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. It's, it's a very, very good idea. You know, uh, the man is great. It is very, is very good in the ring. Very, very. You can't talk about the Women's Division without without the man. I mean, she is definitely. She's been the Women's Division for a good, solid half a decade and what can you say bad about becky lynch in the ring you can't you can't she's very very entertaining she's great on the mic she's great in the ring you've got intangibles there that work perfectly so with that being said uh let's let's go another tag team let's go otis and chad gable Ooh, the Alpha Academy. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Otis and Chad Gable. <laughs> so when I when I took Matt Rill ninth overall, I was starting to think, oh, I could definitely get the Alpha Academy and do like a trio with them. <laughs> and now I can't. So I appreciate that. Um, oh man! I really but I do. think Otis. But I think Otis still has some singles capability inside of him I, I think otis can do that otis needs someone to carry him on the microphone otis needs that but otis can carry himself in the ring 
and you can do that with Chad Gable as long as they are a tag team. Uh, that this is starting to get a little more difficult, more than I thought it would. Yes. Um, once you get down to the twelfth, because we've already had what twenty three selections. I'm not really great at math. I was a broadcasting major. <laughs> But then we we're we're taking tag teams, we're taking stables. Uh, let me get. I mean, wh- why would I not? This guy's been synonymous with Friday Night SmackDown for pretty much his entire career. Let me go ahead. Let me get Master of the Six One Nine, Rey Mysterio. <laughs> let me get Rey Mysterio. Beautiful, beautiful pick. I, I like the pick. I like it. You know, Dom is in there. There's still a possibility of Dom and Ray doing things together. There's still a possibility of that. Okay. Good stuff. It'll be eventual mass versus hair, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into those <laughs> details later. That's old school to me. I remember those hair versus hair matches in WCW. Um, I remember those hair versus hair matches. That was Mask matches, you know, you get rid of the mask, you're done with the mask. Okay, it's time for another woman. Um, this woman needs no introduction right here, so let me go with Oscar. I forgot about Oscar. <laughs> man, I really did. You got Asuka's... me with the man, though. I forgot about her. You, I forgot about Becky Lynch, and I, I felt so stupid when you picked her. So I got to go with the man. Oscar's such a good pick. Dang yeah. it. Yeah, man. <laughs> you could yeah, literally man. put her in the ring with anybody and get it. Yeah, good man. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. So you got this. Okay, man. So. Of course. Ooh. When I think about people who returned last year, when, when, when I think about people who came back, I met this guy about a week before he returned to WWE under the Triple H regime. I'm going to take Karrion Cross with his lovely wife, Scarlett, of course. You, you can't take one without the other. Karrion Cross, man. Woo! That's that's a beautiful pick. Karrion Cross. I like it. I, I like Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross is wonderful. Oh, man. Now. Now this is uh well I, I kind of gotta go a little my age I gotta okay. go a little bit my age I don't know how long this man has got I don't know how long he's got you're not taking Goldberg are you of course not <laughs> but this man has to move up Goldbergs. Oh, no, don't you dare. He has a move up, Goldberg. Don't you dare. No, don't, please. Oh, man. Oh, can, man. can I offer you a trade of some sort? Well, oh, well, I, well okay. It depends. On, it depends. It I'll depends get you a chocolate on. Easter bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a chocolate Easter bunny <laughs> to swap picks right now. It'll be on layaway oh, next year. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? You know, as much as... That is an offer I can't refuse. You can't. I must refuse. No, don't. Go with the rated R superstar. Go with Edge. We didn't Let's even do the. Edge. You didn't even do the introduction right. It's the rated R superstar. superstar. Yeah, oh, I know. I forgot I know, we were recording. They got that on the film. <laughs> oh my god. My friends are going to rip me a new one after that. Um, <laughs> it's it's only on the mock draft, right? Yeah, um, it is. Dang, so we're starting to get really, really thin when it yep. comes to you know the talent and the superstars left. But let me get somebody who genuinely I can put him anywhere on the card, anywhere on the show, and he's going to make it work. Whether you need to elevate another superstar in the ring or on the microphone or a promo or rivalry a feud, let me get let me get the A lister. Somebody who can host Miz TV. <laughs> Let me get the Miz himself on Friday Night SmackDown. I and like it, man. He and Gunther can have battles for the Intercontinental title because yeah. 
Those are two yeah. of the best Intercontinental Champions of our generation. Absolutely. I mean, for real, I, I like the idea. And I think somebody like The Miz will probably bring out another side of Gunther as well, too. Because, you know, Gunther is the general, the ring general. You know, uh, he has that character where he's abrasive. And putting him in the ring with someone like The Miz that is entertaining, funny, correct. Putting him somebody like that in a ring with Gunther will probably bring another element to the show. And I like that. I like that pick. That's a that's a nice pick. Like it. Smart move. Thank you. Thank you. And I hate you for not taking my trade offer, but <laughs> you're on the clock now with Monday Night Raw, and you, you've you already ripped my heart out once, so just don't oh, do it man. again, okay? Oh, man. Uh, like you said, this is getting very, very thick. It's getting very, very difficult now. So with Monday Night Raw, we're in pick – this is 15 right here between us, 15. Whew. Um, Got to think of who's the best available on the board right now. That's very, very tough. This could be if a healthy AJ Styles were here. I would take a healthy AJ Styles, but I can't. He's still hurt. And you already or got Randy Orton who's hurt. Yeah, and and that that right there, you know, I think that you know the timetable of him coming back could be possible, um, could be sooner than AJ Styles, honestly. Oh man, who can I take? Who can I take? As offbeat as this pick is, I need another tag team, so I'm gonna go with the Viking Raiders. You you can have the Viking Raiders. I, I don't like I am, it. I don't like it. But I think I need a jobber. But I think I need, <laughs> I think I need a job tag team. I really do. I don't like the gimmick. I think the gimmick is very very like eighties mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. something that could have been lost in the eighties. Something that I think is you know not really that realistic anymore. So. Okay. Enjoy. I'm going to use them as a springboard for the other guys. My tag team division is a little raw. It's a little rough. But, you know, the Street Profits is holding it up. Um, Strowman and uh, Ricochet could be a team for a little bit. But if I need somebody to battle with uh, the Street Profits, it'll be the Viking Raiders for now. Don't like it, but that's reality, baby. Hey, that's your reality. and. For my reality, I'm going to I'm going to look at this roster. And by the way, we're going to put these on our social media after the show. Y'all are going to get to vote on SmackDown being better drafted than Monday Night Raw. And that's your only option or you're wrong. So <laughs> let me figure out who I need on Friday Night SmackDown. And I am going, and you mentioned unhealthy. And there is one of these guys who are unhealthy right now. But one of them's healthy, still doing his thing. One should be coming back very soon. The other one could take the Intercontinental title off Gunther. And I'm going to take the New Day with oh, man. the 15th man. overall pick not good, not of good. this year's draft. Oh, and so kind of recap, and you can see on our YouTube channel, our picks... Shannon started out with Roman, Seth, Theory, Rhea, and Solo. I started out with Cody, the Usos, Gunther, Bianca, and Owens and Zayn. We've went on, and you know the final picks were the Viking Raiders and the New Day. And the, I'm only saying the final picks of the airing, of the recording, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to – we got to get out of here, but we're going to finish up – we're going to do a supplemental draft. You you guys understand and know that term from the WWE draft. And we're going to post all of these selections on our social media. And you guys get to pick. Whose was better? Was it Friday Night SmackDown? Yours truly, Michael Davis, representing. 
Or was it Monday Night Raw and that ugly 49ers hoodie? I think we know the answer to that one, man. I think we know the answer. You know the answer. It's because it's the Drop the Mic Wrestling Podcast <laughs> uh, on Tobacco Road Sports Radio, on the oh, Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel. Shan, we got a guy here. We got a to continue the Wrestling Wednesday lineup on Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Uh, it's been so much having you on. It's it, And it's been great. We're going to do the uh, supplemental drafts backstage and we're going to get these things to you. Thanks so much to Tyler Sr. from the Stash House Podcast for stopping by, dropping the mic. You can tune in to Al Pago and Michael Davis for this Friday on the Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel. We're going to be breaking down the NFL draft, everything post-draft, some, maybe some NBA playoff talk. Depends Depends how crazy it is. Talking about that crazy Aaron Rodgers trade to the New York Jets. Ooh. I finally got official. You know, you know, it's going to be a great show. You don't want to miss it. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for Tobacco Road Sports Radio. And whatever you do, do not drop the mic. We will see you all next week.